Welcome back. So the key is this. What are these verses saying about the ownership of our money and material things? And I think the answer is clear. What it's saying is that God owns the money and material things that he's entrusted to us. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Everything in the heavens and the earth is yours, O Lord. So I think that's, that's pretty clear. What about this one? Uh, this is Psalms 57 to 12. And, and think about it. In light of the fact that most people were farmers at that time, how does this set of scriptures in Psalms 50 apply to us today? Hear, O my people, I am God, your God. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. So I'd like you to just stop the video there for a second, give it some thought and prayer, and then come back. Welcome back. So what do you think these scriptures are saying uh, today? How does it apply today? Remember, I think it's important to remember at the time, most people were farmers, and most of their wealth was in the form of livestock. They didn't have it in stocks and bonds. They didn't exist at that time. And generally, they didn't keep their wealth and their material things in the bank. They basically had it in terms of livestock, uh, in terms of um, their land. And what God is saying is it, it's all his. He owns it all. How about uh, Leviticus 25, 23? Who owns the real estate? The scripture says, the land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you are but my aliens and my tenants. Now you may think, wait a second, our house is registered in my name or perhaps your name and, and your spouse's name, so it's ours. As Paul said in 1 Timothy 6, we brought nothing into this world and we shall take nothing out of it. Bottom line is, the money and material things that God's entrusted to us are just for the short period of time that we're here on earth. That's our stewardship responsibility. And we need to go to the master, that is God, as to how to manage the money and material things that he's given to us. As a matter of fact, let's be even more specific. Who owns the money? The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty, Haggai 2.8. At that time, silver and gold was used as money. So God's clearly saying that the money is his. You may say, but wait a second, I have worked hard and used my skills and abilities to earn a good income. Question, who gave you your skills and abilities? Deuteronomy 8 says, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. It is God who gives us our natural abilities. Yes, you may have worked hard, and that's good. God wants you to work hard, but it's God who's given you your natural abilities your ability to earn a high income or a good income, whatever level of income God is giving to you, those natural abilities and talents come from the Lord himself. Look at this, in Job 41.11, the question here, is there anything that God does not own? God said to Job, who has any claim against me that I must pay? Everything, God said, everything under heaven belongs to me. So here's the key biblical principle. We are stewards or managers of the money that God has entrusted to us. God is the owner. That's the key biblical principle. And here's how I would define Christian stewardship or biblical stewardship. This is my definition. Acknowledging in mind and heart that God owns absolutely everything, i.e. Own, he owns your money, your home, your skills, and even your life. Have a look at 1 Corinthians 6.20. And using all of those assets in accordance with God's principles and God's will. That's what Christian stewardship is all about. Acknowledging in your heart and your mind that God owns everything and looking to the Lord, asking God as to how you should manage the material wealth um, that he has entrusted to you. So as a practical matter, how do we fulfill our stewardship responsibilities? And in that respect, I'd like you to stop the video, discuss it in, uh, sorry, the video will stop uh, um, automatically. Discuss it in your group, write down your answer, and then come back and I'll provide you with my suggested solutions. So the question is, how do we fulfill our stewardship responsibilities? How can we do that in a practical way?